Hey, what's going on guys? Sean here, living the corporate pilot life. I am here in quarantine still, trying to hang out at the house. So I'm not really going into the office or into the hangar very much. So I can't really do a whole lot of uh, recording for you guys on airplane stuff. But I wanted to get you guys a Tech Tuesday video and it dawned on me that one question you guys have asked several times, I can do right here from home. Uh, so I figured I would knock that out today. Uh, one thing you guys have asked for a few times is a look at our checklist for, uh, for the airplanes. And I happen to have a spare Gulfstream G4 checklist right here. It happened to be living in my uh, closet, actually. So I figured I would break it out, show it to you guys and what it looks like and maybe go through a few uh, uh, abnormal or emergency scenarios and show you guys how we use this thing. Um, this is called the QRH or a Quick Reference Handbook. And yes, it's quite thick. Uh, it's got a lot of information in here for pretty much every scenario that we could have in the airplane. Um, so yeah, and, and actually on the back of it, if you notice, if you go to the very back, it's clear, uh, it takes you right to the emergency uh, airplane evacuation. So if we were to have an emergency evacuation on the runway, we have you know a fire on the runway or something, we need to get out quickly. All we gotta do is grab this thing, flip it over, and you read it right down here. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward. We got a little diagram of how to, how to do it. So it's pretty simple for us. Um, should that happen, yeah, just to read this down for you guys and tell you exactly what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to set the parking brake, left and right fuel cocks, which we've talked about. Those are the fuel handles. Uh, APU master, we're going to turn those off. Uh, left and right fire handles, we're going to pull those. Left and right fire handles, we're going to rotate outboard so that we can discharge and uh, blow the fire bottles into the engines. That's assuming that the engines are on fire. We're probably not going to do that if they're not on fire. Uh, cabin pressurization control, we're going to go to manual, that's up above on the overhead panel. Outflow valve, we're going to switch that, we're going to turn that knob all the way to full open. That's going to depressurize the airplane so that we can get out if we have to, uh, at the emergency exits especially. Uh, batteries one and two, turn those off. Passenger and crew evacuate immediately. And again, it gives you a little diagram here, if you guys can see that, of, uh, of the airplane and how to do the emergency evacuation. So it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it does give you an AFM uh, escape routes plan uh, reference. You can jump over to the uh, aircraft flight manual um, that we can get a little more information from. Obviously, in the heat of the moment, we're not going to go swip, you know, switching through and, and, uh, and trying to find that information. We're just going to use this, and we're going to bail out, and we're going to deal with it all later. But, uh, but yeah, so, so that's that one. But uh, the rest of this manual, to give you guys a quick briefing on, on how this thing works, this front section right here, let me open it up here. This front section is all white tabs. This is all the normal operation stuff. This is the stuff that we're gonna use on a, on a daily basis um, for, for actually running the airplane in normal ops. Now you guys may say, wow, you're gonna get, get this whole big checklist out just to do normal ops. Probably not. Let me show you what we're gonna use instead. It's gonna be this guy right here. Uh, this is just the, uh, the condensed version of that normal stuff. So the, the usual, the normal uh, checklist items are all in here and they're, they're just really condensed. It's, it's all the same stuff, it's just a lot shorter, you know, a lot a simpler version of it that we can, we can work our way through much quicker. So this is the one that we're gonna really use on a daily basis. But if you switch over to the full QRH, it's going to have a little bit more information, a little more breakdown of information uh, found in this guy. So that's why it's much thicker. You know, let me see here. Uh, basically, all of that is squeezed into that. So, uh, yeah, like I said, it's, it's a much more condensed version. Sometimes you'll, you'll find some things in here that aren't in there. The, uh, what are they called? The functional checks are all going to be found in here. You guys see us do those overhead checks before takeoff. Sometimes, you know, that's all going to be in here. Ident you know, uh, exactly identifying which switch is going to be doing what and what to look for. That's all found in here. It's got some supplemental data in that section. Oh, the alternate normals. This has got some really cool stuff. Uh, when we have cold starts, uh, it's got a cold uh, starting checklist in here. Uh, if we have to do an external air start, a cross bleed start, engine cranking cycle, that's all in here. That kind of stuff is not in here. So if we ever have to do that, we're going to reference over here. What else is in here? High elevation airport operations. If we ever go to Aspen and places like that, we're going to use this. Uh, single engine taxi, that's something that we don't do in the Gulfstream. Uh, for a couple of reasons, one being the braking. If you, if you don't have the switches set properly and the, and the uh, hydraulics set properly, you can lose brakes. So we don't really do that, but there's a checklist for it if you had to do it. So all that stuff is found in that front little section of, of, the, uh, of the QRH. That's all in that normal stuff. As we move back in the checklist a little bit farther, let's see here, we get into the green section. The green is all planning. Um, you can see a profile of all the, the stuff in there. That's where we're going to go for our, our takeoff and landing planning stuff and cruise planning, in fact, is all in there. 
Um, it's going to give us takeoff numbers. Let me just grab a, a random chart here. Here's a takeoff planning chart for uh, 2,000 foot elevation with flaps 10. We don't really do flaps 10 takeoff. 2,000 feet, that's pretty normal. But if, if we wanted to find our V speeds and all that, right there. So just a random one to, to pick. Um, if we had to reference that, we could get it out of here. Most of this stuff is done online for us. We do it all on what's called APG. Uh, they do all of our performance planning for us. So we just put in the information into, into APG, spits it out, and we actually use it through AirRink's uh, website. Spits it all out for us. So we really don't even have to reference this, but if the internet's down or for whatever reason we're in some podunk place where we can't get internet, we can always reference this to, to get the information. Uh, let's see here, we got some cruise stuff. It'll tell us how much fuel we're gonna burn and it's very, very exact, uh, very precise on the information that you can pull out of this thing. Uh, a lot of really detailed information. Let's see, you get back here into the, uh, uh, into the landing data. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, it gives us our landing, landing data. Here we go. If we needed to figure out our landing distances available, we can pull some stuff from right there. Let's see here. There's just all kinds of stuff in here. Oh, crosswind component. Here's, here's a cool chart. Crosswind component. If we had to figure out how much crosswind component we have, there you go. Lots of crosswind available on this airplane. I've, I've landed with like 25, 30 knots of straight crosswind. It does really well in crosswind situations. But if we needed to look some stuff up, there you go. So yeah, that's the uh, the green section, the takeoff or, or the uh, performance planning. And where's that other one? We've got some all kinds of weird spaghetti charts. We call them in here. Let me see if I can dig one up here real quick. Uh, maybe. Let's see. Um, yeah, that's all takeoff stuff. Let's see here. There's the cruise. I think it's in the cruise is where I'm looking. No. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Twin engine flight planning. This one's at Mach 8.3. Holy cow. We don't usually cruise at Mach 8.3, but we can use that to figure out all of our cruise information, how much fuel we're going to burn, how far we can go on a tank of gas, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, just a plethora of, oh, it'll even tell you actually um, how high you can climb before you have to burn some fuel off, before you have to level off and, uh, and, uh, and burn a little bit of gas before you can climb some more. So all that information can be pulled out of this guy right here. So that's all the planning information tab. And that pretty much gets us to the halfway point of the checklist or the QRH here. Uh, all this stuff in the back section is all of our abnormal stuff. If we ever have something go wrong, uh, we're typically going to get what's called a cast message. Um, it, it's just a little message that pops up in the center screen on the number four uh, DU unit. It's the bottom one right in front of the throttles. Uh, and you'll get a cast message that pops up. It's either going to be uh, blue, yellow, or, uh, or red. And in, in aviation, we don't say yellow. We use amber is the, the, uh, the way you're supposed to say it, but whatever. It's yellow. Uh, so whenever those pop up, we're going to basically jump right to this little section here. Let me see here. This first little section, notice we got red, yellow, and blue all right there. Um, so any message that pops up, it's going to be in here. So let's just grab one. Let's just say hypothetically a message popped up that said, uh, here we go, uh, bleed air off. It's pretty simple, right? It's going to tell you right here, bleed air selected off. Select bleed air on as, requi as required. Okay, let's find something a little more useful here. Um, oh, here we go. Um, battery one or two charger fail. Battery one or, uh, or two has failed. Out, uh, the input power circuit breaker is open possibly. Um, and it's gonna tell us exactly what to do. Check the left and right uh, uh, battery charger circuit breakers on the PDB. That's the, per the circuit breaker panel that's behind us uh, back uh, towards the galley. You can't even get to it from the seats. We have to get up out of the seats and go back there and check those. So hopefully it's not right on takeoff because we're not getting up. Um, if it's open, close the circuit breaker. If the light remains on, deactivate the battery charger by pulling the circuit breaker, light will remain on. See battery uh, charger failure page Echo Alpha 21. So if you notice what it does, it kind of gives you a quick rundown of how to figure it out quickly in that first little section, but then it's gonna send you back to that main section. Let's jump back here to this big thick part where it'll actually break down that information a little more. So if we jump back here, just say we've got that one. Echo Alpha 21, there we go. 
battery or battery charger fail. And it gives you a full uh, checklist of what to run now. And most of what we talked about already in that first section is already in here, but it may give you a little more information. So that's the way we, we run those checklists. Um, yeah, so pretty much anything that goes wrong, we're gonna pull it, we're gonna pull that section right there. We're gonna find the, uh, the, the procedure and then it's gonna direct us to go back here most likely uh, to really dig up what we need to do. Um, so yeah, we've got tons of checklists back here. I mean, just you name it. Let, let me read the tabs off. Uh, the, uh, the first one's avionics or electrics. Everything that we need to know is right in there for avionics and electrics. Uh, brakes, we actually have two brake sections because the, the G4 came with two different versions of brakes. We have a brake by wire uh, or an HMAB, hydromechanical actuated brakes. Uh, HMAB is the much better system. The brake by wire is very touchy. It, the early ones were brake by wire and it just it wasn't a very good system. You, you touch the brakes a little bit and man, they will just lock up in a heartbeat. So they went back to the HMAB system. It was a much better way to go. Now that they've developed a little better brake by wire system, I think the G650 went to a brake by wire. I think the G5 is still HMAB. I could be wrong on that. Um, so yeah, we've got two different brake system uh, uh, checklists areas. Then we can go into engine failure stuff and all kinds of engine failure, not just the engine stops. It's all kinds of stuff. Let's see. Uh, thrust reverse unlocked or deployed in flight. That's a bad one. If you get a thrust reverser deploy in, in flight, that's a bad scenario. You, you pretty much got to shut that engine down quickly uh, because yeah, all that thrust is, is trying to slow you down and it's going to go bad. Um, it talks about uh, single engine landing procedures, single engine go around procedures, all this kind of stuff is all in here. And uh, air, uh, air relights, if you have to, if you shut one down or if you have one fail, you can relight the engine. It walks you through exactly how to do that stuff. Uh, we've got fire, a big section on fire, what to do, flight controls and autopilot stuff, fuel and hydraulics, landing gear, pneumatics, and then a whole bunch of miscellaneous stuff. And then back here in the back, we've got this big uh, supplemental procedures and data. And a, a large portion of this is every circuit breaker in the airplane. It, it tells you what it is, where it is, and what's connected to it. So if you ever have to find a certain circuit breaker, you can go back here, figure it out real easy. So, uh, so yeah, that's the checklist. It's uh, a plethora of information can be found in this thing. But uh, let, me, let me just grab one, a random checklist here, and, and see what it is. And maybe we'll walk through one. Let's see here. Ooh, here we go. Immovable flight controls. If you ever have to have an immovable flight control scenario, it will tell you exactly what to do. Uh, rudder control for the yaw, flight power shutoff handle. Do not pull unless uh, coupled with a single engine emergency. So if you're, if, as long as you're dual engine, if you lose rudder control, just leave it alone. That's what it's telling you, which is kind of weird, but okay. Uh, aileron, if you, if you have to, uh, if you can't roll the airplane, your ailerons are frozen up. That's where I'm just gonna tell you to pull the flight, uh, the power shutoff handle. And that one basically shuts off all hydraulics to the flight controls. This airplane, I think you guys have probably heard me say, the G4 flies like a dump truck, and that's with hydraulics. When you shut the hydraulics off to the uh, flight controls, this airplane is a serious dump truck. It is just, it's almost impossible to fly with one person. You almost need two people turning on that airplane or pulling and pushing to fly it without hydraulics because it is just really heavy on the controls. Um, but you know what, if you, if you, they locked up, if you have an actuator freeze and you can't move at all, it's better than nothing. So you shut, you pull the uh, hydraulic shut off and, uh, and you basically fly it that way. Uh, same thing for the pitch, pull the flight, uh, flight power shut off handle. And then it kind of walks you down exactly how to use the trim, uh, to, to work the, uh, the pitch in that kind of scenario. And it also talks about the, uh, the flaps because when you, when you put the flaps down, uh, the pitch is gonna change, it's gonna balloon really bad. So it actually says, uh, let's see here, um, continue uh, flight to the nearest suitable airport. This is after you've pulled the flight power shutoff handle. Uh, select a runway that's at least 7,000 feet long and 150 feet wide. Minimize crosswind component to less than five knots. That's how un uncontrollable this airplane is when the, the uh, uh, flight power shutoff handle has been pulled. And I shouldn't say uncontrollable. It is still controllable, but it's just very difficult to control. Um, uh, let's see here. If the flight crew uh, elects to land with flaps 20, fly the approach at V-REF for 20 plus 10 knots. Um, C-section five performance for landing, for, for the performance landing distance or flaps 20 configuration. 
Um, engines do not uh, go to high idle at flaps 20. We, you know, that's a whole different scenario. Uh, it says with the GPWS flap override switch, you'll turn that on. Air start ignition to on, landing gear down. Hey, that's a good thing to do, right? Uh, Nutcracker, your guys' favorite switch. Nutcracker, we're going to test those before we land. Warn inhibit, we'll turn that on. Flap uh, position, verify that it's at 20. And VREF, appropriate for the configuration. Uh, landing thrust reversers deploy as needed and braking as required. Going to be plenty of that going on. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's a very detailed, very specific type of checklist. Um, and it's actually, again, called the QRH, Quick Reference Handbook from Gulfstream. Works really well. Dirt does a great job, lasts a long time. So yeah, hopefully you guys uh, learned a little something about the checklist on this airplane. Uh, this is the, the checklist that we typically use, like I said, but this one is just, it's just a lot of stuff. Back in my flight safety days, I pretty much had this thing memorized, you guys. Uh, we, when I was in and out of that sim every day running emergencies and abnormal situations, I could quote page numbers of every, not every checklist, but a lot of checklists of what page to go to for all kinds of different stuff. But uh, use it or lose it, right? I, I don't use this thing very much anymore just when I get in the simulator, really. We have so few uh, emergencies in, in real world uh, operations. This thing really just kind of collects dust for the most part. We'll get it out and, and uh, play with it sometimes on those long flights. When, uh, when Gus and I were flying together, a lot of times we'd get this thing out and quiz each other on, uh, on what's what and, uh, and where to find stuff. But uh, otherwise, this thing, we, we got to stay fresh on how to use it, but it, it really does collect a lot of dust. And like I said, we use this one for, for getting from A to B. So yeah, hopefully you guys learned a little something. Uh, hopefully you learned uh, a little bit about the checklist and, and how we use it. And, uh, give me the thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you guys on the next Tech Tuesday. Keep living the corporate pilot life.